In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this soreness heat map. So what I have here is some monitoring data and an option where the athletes can enter in if there are any areas that they are feeling sore. And then I have this heat map where I can select the date and it will automatically pull up where we might be sore on that date. This is going to be really powerful if you are using any sort of wellness questionnaires and you just want a quick and easy way to visualize um, which athletes might be sore in which areas. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are going to create the injury or the soreness heat map. Now, in order to get this done, I'm just going to orient you to the data. So what we have here is basically just um, some monitoring data where the athletes have been able to basically enter in their name, a date, and then sleep, one to 10, uh, stress, etc., like a like a conventional monitoring form. Then we're calculating a readiness score. But then interestingly, in this particular um, form, they have an, an opportunity to select any areas that they might be sore. And that is just formatted as um, all of the different areas with a comma in between them. And then um, I'm able to kind of look at those areas. But what I'd like to do is break that up and then create some sort of visualization so that it's really easy for me to determine where the athletes are sore on what days. So from here, what we're going to need to do is just create a way that we can select um, what date it is we want to look at. So what I'll do is I'll just enter the word date here. And I'm going to color this box because I'm going to create a drop down menu. So to do that, what I'll do is just go data, data validation, and then we'll choose list from range. And from there, what I'll do is just take this column B and I'm going to go from B2 all the way down and hit OK. Now, the cool thing about Google Sheets data validation is that it's only going to show each value once. But you'll notice we have many different um, 2022, 0102s, 0103s, etc. But in our validation list, it's only showing each one once. So for now, let's select this date here. Now from my form, I know what my actual um, areas of soreness are. So I'm just going to type those in now. We have feet, calf, um, hip, uh, low back. And then I'm going to leave some space for that. We'll say upper back, um, shoulder, and neck and torso. So these are my areas of soreness. What I'll do is just bold these a little bit so they stand out. And now what I need to do is create a formula where I can actually um, filter out all of the values. So the first one that we'll do is we'll start with a filter formula. So we're gonna build this in layers. Um, the first thing that I wanna do is actually filter out all of these um, values as long as they match the date that we've selected and as long as they are not empty. So if they're empty, we're gonna leave them alone, but as long as they match what we've selected and they're not empty, let's filter those out. So we'll start our formula down here. I'm just gonna type in filter so you can follow along. And what I'll type is equals filter, open this up. And from the filter formula, what it's gonna ask me is the range of cells that we wanna look at. So in this case, I wanna look at H2 um, all the way down. So this range of cells here, I know this is never going to change. So I'm gonna hit F4 to lock that in. Um, or you can just put the dollar signs in front of the range. And then now I'm gonna hit comma and we're gonna put in our conditions. Now the first one that we want is that H2 all the way down again, F4, and we want it when it does not equal blank. So what I'll say is does not equal, which is um, less than and greater than signs facing towards each other. And for blank, the symbol is um, two quotation marks. And I'll close this off to show you what it does. So now what we've done is filtered out all of the variables um, as long as they're not blank. And you can see we do have some blank ones in our data set. Now the next piece to this formula is I also want to do it when this column here, B2 all the way down. Okay, and I'm gonna lock that one in too because I know that that's never gonna change. Is equal to, sorry, is equal to the date that we've selected. And that is stored in L1. I will also lock that in because I know that the date is always gonna be stored in L1. So now what you're gonna see 
is as I select a new date, it actually pulls out all of the values from that date. So that is part one to this formula. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out a way that we can actually um, split this up. Okay. Now there, there is a time when if we were to basically delete all of the variables from 0102, that filter is going to give us back an error. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do in our formula is get rid of that error. So in our filter formula, I'm just going to type if error. And then if there is an error, I'm just going to hit comma blank at the end. And now if I was to delete all those variables again, now we just get blank. So the next formula we're going to run this through is called the split function. And what split does is it actually allows us to um, split our function or our, our text based on a delimiter. In this case, it's going to be the comma. So what we're going to type is equal split, open this up, and let's just show you how it works. I'm going to select this first kind of cell here. So we have feet, comma, calf, comma, low back. And then the things that it wants for split is it wants what my delimiter is. In this case, it is a comma. And I'm going to put that in brackets and then split by each. It says whether or not to divide around text, each carrier containing a delimiter. We're going to add true and then remove empty space, true. So remove empty space will actually take away spaces before and after the delimiter. When I hit enter, you can see what it's done now. It's separated into feet, calf, and low back. Okay. Now, the only thing to note is if we want to match this up, we have an extra space still hanging out here because it's just removed the one sort of um, before the delimiter. So then the next thing that I can do is now where this H2 is that we've already kind of created and split. If I go and take this filter formula and copy that, and I just paste that right over top of the H2, what you'll see is it still gives me my feet, calf, and low back. But because we want it to calculate multiple times, what I'm going to add at the beginning is just this formula called array formula. And what array formula does is tells Google Sheets that this is going to calculate over multiple columns and cells. And when I hit enter, now you can see that it's actually split up all of the um, variables on that date. Okay, so if I switch to another date, you can see that it basically switches them all out. Okay, so that's the split function. Then the next one, um, as, as I mentioned before, we still have these extra spaces. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to add this function called trim. So we'll take this whole formula one more time and I'm just going to paste it under where we have trim here. Whoops, paste that under and we're going to remove those extra functions. So what I'm going to do is wrap this split function in the function trim. And what trim does is it just removes leading and trailing and repeated spaces in text. Okay, so where I would basically um, finish that ca um, calculation off is I just put the bracket there and that locks in the trim. And you can see it's just shifted everything back one because it's removed all of those empty spaces. So from here, it's just a simple matter of calculating or counting how many of these um, that we actually have in this array. So let's take this whole formula. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go under feet. And what I'll do is open up a formula called count if. And from here, we'll paste that in and comma. The condition that we want to count is whether or not it is equal to, in this case, K2, and then I'll close this off. So basically what we're saying is count if, and I want to go through all of this, and then count if is going to look through basically feet, calf, low back, calf, low back, hip, low back, upper back, torso, shoulder, shoulder, torso, hip, and count how many times it has feet. And when I hit enter, you're going to see that it's one. And because I've left this one wide open and it knows that it's always just one above where the formula is, I should be able to drag this over 
and then it's counted. So we have two calves, one and two, two hips, one and two, and then three low backs, one, two, and three. And if I copy this one more time, because I left that counting space open, it should all work properly. Again, we're matching to K4, and then L4, M4, and N4. So now we have our basic heat map. One thing that we can do to this now is I can just add what's called a conditional formatting. So I'll go to format, conditional formatting, and I'm just going to add a color scale. Now I personally like this red color scale, and I'm going to make the maximum value sort of the darker red and the minimum value the lightest red. And when I hit done, now what you'll see is the areas that have more of a certain soreness area. We'll clean this up just a little bit. Um, they're going to be kind of darker red and then the areas that have less are gonna be a lighter red. And as I change, you'll be able to see very easily as you're coming into a session once people have filled out their forms, oh, we have no soreness today. Or on this day, okay, so feet are a little bit sore, so maybe I want to adjust my session to take that into account. So this is just a simple visual that you can use to check in on your athletes and see how they're doing. I hope this trick helps you out. And if it does, if you could please like and subscribe to the video. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.